Hey guys, I'm really excited about this week's much anticipated and highly requested video of our tour of Dauntless, our 2017 Lagoon 450F. She is officially for sale and ready to take her next owners on their sailing adventure. Two things before we get started. One, the bulkheads. They are not broken and they were inspected by a Lagoon facility and we have installed the factory supplied reinforcement kit. Number two, the detail crew wasn't able to get here before filming this episode as they are really, really backed up, but she is on the schedule for a full compound, buff, wax, detail, polish, and all of that. So let's go take a look. We equipped this boat with the largest tender that would safely be supported by the Davit system. This Walker Bay 3.6 meter, 12 foot console has a 30 horsepower Honda outboard for a zippy and comfortable ride. As we step onto the boat from the sugar scoops, we come to the first mechanical spaces. Here we have the upgraded Yanmar 4JH57s with brand new SD60s as well as three blade fixed props. On the starboard sugar scoop, we also have a shower that has hot and cold water as well as an upgraded swim ladder. From the sugar scoops, we have a nice wide transom to be able to step down into the spacious cockpit. One of our favorite features in the cockpit on this boat is the sunbed. It's great for taking a nap, reading a book, or just enjoying a beautiful sunset. The cockpit also features an 85 liter refrigerator, plenty of storage, a magma grill, a full suite of cushions, and upgraded teak decking. The foredeck has some really nice features, one of which is the super comfortable front cockpit. Sitting here, you always have a nice breeze to enjoy a beautiful view. In the front cockpit, there's loads of storage, plug-ins hooked up to solar charge controllers for a temporary solar array, the propane tankless hot water vent, and the remote for the windlass. There's added storage here in the front cockpit because Dauntless is completely off-grid. There is no generator, leaving a massive lazarette for you to use. Forward of the front cockpit, there are two trampolines split by the chain track. This boat is equipped with 175 feet of half-inch chain, a 105-pound mantis anchor, a mantis bridle, and a 55-pound backup anchor. There's also a five-foot bowsprit with two in-mast halyards for both a Code Zero and a spinnaker running back to the helm. There are also two four-peak lazarettes with an amazing amount of storage in them accessible from the deck here. Feeling comfortable and secure while walking across the foredeck is very important, especially while you're underway. This boat has lots of grab rails to be able to comfortably hold on while you're moving to get from forward up to the helm. The flybridge is one of the most desirable places on this boat for several reasons. First, while you're at anchor, it's a wonderfully comfortable place to sit. With the sunbed forward of the helm to the 10 foot long bench, it makes it perfect to sit up here and have a sundowner or just watch the anchorage. Helming from the flybridge is a breeze. You've got enough room to be able to seat your entire crew for everyone's participation in sailing, or if you're by yourself, you can easily single hand because everything runs back to this helm station. This boat has five winches. One is electric here for the main, as well as three more at the helm for easily managing all of your sheets and halyards. And the fifth winch is at the davit system for the dinghy. At the helm, we have a 12 inch chart plotter and two Triton 2 displays, as well as the VHF wireless handset. Dauntless does have the original factory sails, a Genoa at the head sail, and a fully battened main sail with three reefing points. Another benefit and highly desirable feature of the flybridge is the visibility. You can easily see the bow from this position, as well as both aft quarters of the boat, making maneuvering in tight spaces very easy. Clear visibility is had to the port aft of the boat with this nice hatch, which is also convenient for communication down into the cockpit and providing a great amount of airflow.
So the salon and galley are really well laid out in this late model lagoon. There's plenty of storage underneath the settee, in the floor, and all of the overhead storage. Now, as far as the galley goes, this was a huge upgrade that we did as uh, previous professional chefs and passionate cooks and entertainers. We really wanted to make sure that there wasn't gonna be any compromise preparing meals and what's really the center of the home or the boat uh, while we were out cruising. So the first thing you're gonna notice about this galley is that the non-standard counters we upgraded. This is deep titanium versus a light gray. We added a waterfall edge to the outside to cap in the U-shaped galley. We thought it was really, really pretty. We took out the standard 130 liter fridge that was here and extended this counter a bit so that we could get a 200 liter fridge and freezer combo in here to keep everything that you need at hand while you're prepping meals. Over here at the cooking station, this is really cool. This is a 24 inch Miele three burner induction cooktop. It is 240 volt. And the best thing about this is you can run all three burners on high at the same time, so there's no compromise. And that allows meals to come together really, really quick. One of my favorite things is the uh, Miele induction steam oven that's below. It is a convection oven, it is full steam, and this is the best way to bake bread, hands down. Uh, over here, we have a really powerful 1200 watt microwave, boils water in a jiff. So this boat came with two small sinks, I guess a wash and a rinse, and it really wasn't satisfactory or enough for us. You know, big pots and pans, you're prepping a lot of food, washing stuff. So we actually took those two sinks out and we put in one big 27 inch deep sink, but you don't have to wash dishes in this sink. We actually have an 18 inch Miele stainless tub dishwasher. You can put a ton of dishes and flatware in this guy. And being on a boat, conservation is very, very important. This will use 1.3 gallons of water to do an entire load of dishes. During the galley remodel, we actually took out the freezer that was here. We relocated that down into the utility room that we customized, and that gave us the ability to have four big drawers and a big drawer bank here. We removed a small drawer bank here and put in what is an absolute must in my opinion for being on a boat and cruising is a ice maker. This guy is the CU50, it's a Scotsman. It does 50 pounds of ice a day. So that's enough for all of your drinks and you can ice down your beach coolers. Another nice feature that we added to make this space more versatile is some adjustable table bases. Instead of the fixed post bases from the factory, both of these are on pneumatic shocks. So you can just release the posts, push down on the table and drop it down into well, like a big couch to watch a movie on the TV, or you can actually easily make a bed space for additional guests if you, all the cabins are full. And last but not least is our forward facing nav station. This is a great spot to sit and do watch during inclement weather. It houses our BMS monitoring system, our radio, and the VHF with our AIS. Dauntless is considered a 4.4 charter version, but has been heavily customized. Down here on the starboard side, there are two staterooms with ample storage for all of your necessities. Each stateroom has its own ensuite dry head. The forward stateroom has a spacious full-size bed, and the aft cabin has a queen-sized semi-island berth. The aft stateroom on the port side mirrors the one on the starboard, but what was once the port forward stateroom is now converted into one of the most coveted rooms on the boat. This room is our utility slash laundry room. What is great about this room is on the outboard wall, we've maintained the cabinetry for a hanging locker and storage. This bank of drawers is unique because it has been completely customized. Every individual drawer fits the whole shape of the boat as it goes up and out. So you maximize the storage space in every single drawer. Moving forward in the room is one of the absolute coolest features on this boat. It's the Miele washer and dryer. Since these units are separate, they actually will run more efficiently using less water and less energy than the traditional single unit would on a boat. The other nice thing about being a heat pump dryer is that this guy is actually going to get your clothes completely dry, which is so important when you're in the tropics. Moving along the inboard side of this room, we actually have the Seawater Pro 40 gallon per hour water maker. 
keeping this boat completely off-grid with your ability to make your own water at any time. Dauntless has by far the most extensive and robust power system of any boat in her class in the world. She was kitted out to be fully off-grid, and to do that, we've given her an extensive solar system, a backup alternator, all of which feed and power a very, very large house bank to run all of her systems. Starting off, we have the extensive solar system. On the aft of the boat, there's a large array comprised of 2,335 watts of rigid panels. Moving forward to the coach roof, we have a pair of 550 watt arrays totaling 1100 watts for midship. For additional power, there are two jacks in the forward cockpit. This allows for an additional 880 watts if desired with temporary panels. So in total, this boat boasts 4,315 watts of solar panel, coupled with seven charge controllers to maximize input and minimize shading loss. On the starboard engine, there's a 48 volt, 100 amp high output alternator capable of generating 4,800 watts of charging power. Now for the batteries. Dauntless boasts 53 kilowatt hours of storage in our 48 volt Tesla house bank. To put this in perspective, it is the equivalent of 4,700 amp hours of storage on a 12 volt system. This large bank allows for the daily loads plus a three day reserve to allow full use of the systems regardless of weather. We monitor the system with a fully integrated BMS monitoring system from our nav station. Her DC systems all operate at 12 volts and the power for that is provided with a 200 amp DC to DC converter from the 48 volt house bank. This has four levels of built-in redundancy. The AC side that powers everything from the galley, laundry, and the five ACs is run by our 15,000 watt inverter. This system is designed to operate all systems simultaneously without the need for soft starts or load sharing. Yes, you can cook, do laundry and dishes all while the ACs are running and it's all powered by battery and solar. Now to manage all of these systems, we've installed a custom power panel with touchscreen control for our Victron systems and individual breakers for all equipment. This system has operated flawlessly and powered our lives on the water for the past three years. All right, guys, thanks again for joining us for our 100th episode <laughs> and the announcement of the sale of our beloved 450. If you're interested, please feel free to send us an email at the crew at sailingdauntless.com. And if you wanna check in the description below, we'll put a link to a PDF so you can see all of her specs and pictures there as well. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>